Hello there, my name is Ismaus and uh, today let's continue, let's do another smoke simulation uh, in Blender 2.8 and uh, this time we are burning uh, the zombie using a flamethrower. Uh, the, other th the last time we just burned the guy without using anything but uh, let's ignite uh, the frames are using, the flames are using uh, a flamethrower here, you can see, yeah. This is the tutorial we're going to be doing and uh, I guess we can get started with that. So yeah, we need to, you, you can find uh, these characters uh, that I'm using here uh, from the link I'll be leaving in the description. Uh, again, you will f the, they're from Mixamo, so you just, I'll be linking the exact characters I'm using, so you just hit download and I should be able to download uh, the characters. Uh, you, you have to be signed in uh, for it to work. Make sure that you're importing, sorry, downloading FBX and uh, with uh, the skin uh, to include uh, the character and uh, that should be all. I uh, just hit uh, download uh, to download the character. Uh, then you open up Blender. You first make sure that this is paused. You open up Blender, go under File, Import, FBX, uh, select those files and hit Import and they should be imported like this. Uh, let me switch my uh, workbench rendering here. Now you put shading to random here. Just need to move uh, these characters around. Uh, just these 180 degrees. If you play back, you can see the animation we have. I'm also going to reduce some of the, poly the polygon count in these characters because it's kind of slowing down my uh, viewport. So I'll just add a decimate modifier to this. Decimate uh, subdivide and subdivide, let me use da, da, da. Make sure this is above. Add another decimate modifier to this so that we can reduce the polygon count. Apply. Perfect. Okay, so let's start setting up the animation first and then we can start adding in the smoke. Okay, so I want these hands to be moving around uh, like you see in the original animation. So if you see here, if you look closely, you can see that uh, the hands are moving around and moving the, the flame thrower with them. So uh, for that, we're just going to go back to the file here, here, tab into edit mode uh, for the uh, for the button for the amateur control tab and now uh, uh, the amateurs or bonds that control uh, the, the arms movement are uh, this so if you hit R twice you get this kind of uh, rotation here uh, that is going to be enough for us but uh, you see here in the timeline we already have some frames there we don't need them so I can delete them and uh, it shouldn't affect the original animation now I can start adding in my own keyframes by setting a record, uh, the record button here. Add a keyframe there, maybe here, like that. Yes. Trying to make it a little bit interesting. And after the zombie bands maybe he can rest his arms like so so if we play back you can see yeah that is a bit more interesting than just having the arms in one position okay so now that we have that we can start working on the flamethrower uh, yeah I just need to be working in this area okay let me tab out of edit mode and uh, let me create a simple flames thrower here just going to do something very basic with a cube just have something to represent uh, the frames wall thrower so duplicate these I don't know something like that is going to be our frame thrower now now to attach it to the hands, we just want to select one of the bones that kind of controls at least the wrist and uh, parent it to these armatures. That moves around with uh, this armature. So 
Just select that, tab out of edit mode, and then select the object or throw flame thrower. Then select the armature, control P, parent to bone, and uh, you should have that, something like that. Just to make, to make this a bit more interesting, let me add a cylinder. That will be like our gas cylinder on his back. Just need to find his backbone. I think I can attach it to this bone here. So tab out to edit mode and then select that. Tab out of edit mode, select this. Select the amateur, control P, bone. Perfect. Great. Uh, we have this animation done, so let's just get the timing right. So uh, this would be too close. So I'm just going to select this. Uh, let me first start, turn off key frame recording, push him behind somewhere like this. You want to give him some distance so that he doesn't get burned by the flames. You just give this a more interesting shape here. Okay, so now let's start working on the particles. So I'm just going to select this face here. Shift D to duplicate it, and then P to separate it, and then parent it. And let me just find it. Parent it to this. Uh, okay, I need to parent. First, make sure that it doesn't have any keyframes. I want it to move uh, with the frame thrower like that. Great. Now we can go in the particle system, give it a new particle system, and uh, we should have something like that. I'm going to add a ground uh, so that uh, these particles don't just go down. Then give it a collision property so that the particles can bounce off. And uh, I want the particles to stick to the ground. I don't want them to bounce off like that. So I'll give this a stickiness value something like that and also give them damping randomness some friction and uh, some random friction as well and then now you can select the particles and give them uh, a higher velocity normal velocity let's try five i think that's good enough let's see okay that might not be strong enough Let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, okay, I think we need to clear catch it because you can see there is a jump here and uh, sometimes you need to tab out of edit mode uh, to clear that red line, uh, which is, which indicates how much catch it has been, how much of the animation has been catched. Okay, so something like that. I'm also going to add some turbulence, uh, some turbulence force. So let me add that so that we have, yeah, so that this is not very straight like that. So let's go under the physics property. Give this, let me try a hundred, a strength of a hundred. Okay, maybe that's too much. Let's try 10. And I think that's good enough. Now let's start working on, okay, that's still too much. Let's try. Okay, I think that's good. Now let's try, let's add uh, the smoke. So I'll add a mesh, a cube. This is going to act as our domain to contain the simulation. Let's make sure that it encloses the entire scene or at least uh, the character or where you expect the smoke to be. Place it in the center like that. Give it some headroom uh, like that. Now can go to the physics tab and uh, turn on smoke simulation, change the type to domain and uh, that should be enough for that. And now we can select this smoke emitter or particle emitter, give it a smoke type and then a type of flow. I make sure the flow type is set to fire and smoke. Let's see now, you can see what we are having. Uh, right now the smoke is being emitted from the mesh but not from the particles so to make sure that it's emitted from the particles we need to change the, the flow source from mesh to particles and select the particle system we want to use 
uh, just so these flames are kind of fast enough, I'm just going to give them an initial velocity. And maybe an initial velocity of two. And you can see now they're behaving more like frames, flames. And, uh, yeah, that's what we have. Now we want uh, these flames uh, to start spreading on through the character and uh, lit or light uh, the zombie on, to, on fire as well. So uh, for that, let's uh, go at around flame 20 out of new particle system to uh, the zombie. You can see the entire character will be, will be burning if we just do that, but uh, we want only a few spots because if you look at the reference images, some reference images, you will notice that uh, zombie on fire. No, the entire person never gets on fire. You can see only parts of uh, the character gets on fire. So let's do that by creating a new vertex group. So I'll just go to the vertex groups, add a new vertex group, tab out to edit mode and go to weight, weight paint and uh, start painting where I want the fire to be. Around there. Maybe the heart, some parts of the heart, like that. And uh, now we can go to the particle settings again. And uh, under, uh, I think it's called vertex groups, we can change, we can set, uh, we can give the density of the, of the vertex group we have just created. And you can see, uh, the particles are only being emitted where uh, the weight paint is. Uh, if you play back, you can see. But uh, we want to reduce the, the lifetime and uh, also start the emission after only after uh, the frames have hit uh, the character. So around there, we can start uh, emitting frames from this guy. So uh, we can go to, we can start set the frame start to 33 you can see yes so then we can go under the physics tab and give this a small property and uh, set the type to flow and uh, uh, the flow type set to let's just set it to fire if you want you can set it to fire and mesh uh, but fire and uh, smoke but i'm just going to keep it simple and uh, the flow source should be particles and select the particle system you have just created. If you play back, you can see the character also set, sets on fire. I will also want to give him an initial velocity. You can see now. That's why I need to show velocity of two. And uh, We can also set increase the normal velocity, or let's just increase uh, the z velocity, object z velocity. So let's try ten. Okay, let me first find out uh, the object orientation of this object, the orientation of this of this object. You can see our y is located is pointing up, so that means we need to change the y velocity so that the frames can go up. Yes. Okay, that's too fast, so let's try two. Yeah. Again, you can go in, I uh, can reduce again the lifetime and uh, give it some variation. And uh, let's see, what else can we do? If we go to the physics properties, uh, change uh, the burn rate. If you increase this, uh, the smoke will rise a bit faster or burn faster. Uh, let me increase the initial velocity here and see how that if that increases the burn rate you can see have a lot let's try two yep uh, you can also change the temperature difference of the domain so that uh, the smoke or fire rises faster or is a bit faster so if i change this to about two you can see that the fire is a bit burns much more faster but uh, it's too much right now, so you can go in and uh, play with different settings. So I don't, but I don't want to keep this story too long. So I'm just going to end it here. But uh, basically, this is how you would set this up, and uh, you would want, you you would also want 
uh, the kind of the f this flamethrower to stop kind of uh, throwing frames, uh, but uh, the zombie should continue burning. And uh, the way you do that is just just make sure that uh, let me select this. Uh, the end emission is uh, is higher than the end emission for uh, the frame thrower. We can even reduce this to about 150. Let me play back. So this should stop at around 150. Okay. Uh, but this continues. Yeah, basically that's how you set it up. And uh, you can obviously, if you want more fidelity or more resolution in your simulation, you just select the domain and go to the physics property, increase our settings here. I'll be making a, a tutorial on how to kind of create a high resolution a simulation. But uh, yeah, this is just a simple tutorial to set up this. Uh, also, if you want to see how I set up the materials, uh, you can see here. You can see even this is a, a bit has a little bit more resolution because I increased the domain subdivision by two. But uh, I multiplied it by two to get sixty-four. But so you can see if you increase it even further, you get even better resolution. Let's see. Uh, so I set up some materials here. If we go to look dev, some materials are for the fire. Uh, because by default, uh, if you don't set up the materials, it won't. The smoke won't render in rendered mode or look dev. It won't render. So you you need to set up the materials here. I don't want to keep this tutorial too long. So uh, if you want to see how I set that up, how I set up the materials. You can just pause for a bit and maybe take a look. It's very simple. It's a very simple setup. Basically, we have a principal shader fed into an add shader uh, with an emission and then to the principal to the material volume. Now we have a car ramp that is fed through, that is getting its factor from an attribute from the frame attribute. This is provided by uh, the domain. Uh, it should be around here. So you can use any of these values uh, in your shader by calling them as an attribute you just type in uh, the name like frame I think there is density you can see how it's used here as well and temperature so you can also use temperature here just make sure that uh, you spell uh, the attribute correctly and then you can fit it through the different factors you want to use uh, but uh, yeah that's it I also have a time-lapse version of this sped up to about two uh, if you want to just watch that uh, anyway, thank you. And uh, that is on my second tutorial, second uh, channel here. So again, I'll be leaving a link for the downloads uh, in the description. Uh, yeah. Thank you.